Well, uh, in the previous lecture video, we discussed the comparative statics of profit maximizing firm where the firm is hiring only one factor input. But in this case, we assume that let's suppose the firm is hiring more than one input. That is, the firm is hiring two factor input. Then let's see uh, what happens to the profit maximizing behavior of the firm if the firm is hiring two factor inputs. So again, we are discussing the comparative statics in case of uh, more than one factor inputs. So if the firm is hiring two factor input, the profit maximizing problem can be reported as maximize x1, x2 and price of output and this is f of x where this time x is a vector of two factor input and this is also a vector because you are hiring two factor input so this is w1 and w2 and similarly this is again the vector of factor input this is total revenue of the firm and this is total cost of the firm okay so this is the profit function so again to uh, obtain initial condition we have to apply the first order condition and the second order condition for the first order condition uh, we take the first derivative of this function or this function both these functions are same and we put it equal to zero right and we know that x factor demand function is the function of prices the uh, price of output and the price of input but to make our analysis simple we assume that let p is equal to one and let's suppose the factor demand function depends upon w only so that's why you can see x1 is the function of w1 and w2 because you are hiring two factor inputs so this is the price of factor one and this is the price of factor two but the prices of output is normalized by one that's why we didn't report here similarly x2 is also the function of w1 and w2 uh, here is a little bit complexity uh, you can ask why x1 is the function of w1 and w2 why not w1 only because if the prices of the other input change you can also just change you can also change the demand for the cross factor for example if w2 change and uh comes on both x1 as well as x2 so there is own price effect and cross price effect so x1 is not only the function of its own price but also the function of the cross factor input okay that's why we will take the derivative of the production function with respect to x1 and with respect to uh, x2 similarly we will take the uh, derivative of sorry the same profit function with respect to x2 as well so this is a complex derivative right and to simplify it we will use whiteboard so look at it so this is the first derivative with respect to x1 right of this profit function or this profit function and if 2 is the first other partial derivative with respect to x2 so if you uh, shift w1 and w2 to the right hand side we will get equation 1 and equation 2 so these are the first order condition for profit maximization now for comparative statics we will take the um, derivative of these first order condition with respect to w1 and w2 but this is a little bit complex and that this is given in the wherein book for example look at it these derivatives are directly given in the variant book the question is how can how can we simplify this derivative so let us try it if we want to take the derivative of this function with respect to w it should be noted that we will apply two rules in the derivative of, of this function suppose we will apply total derivative because uh, if you take the derivative of this function with respect to w1 right with respect to w1 you will apply total derivative as you as well as you will apply the chain rule let's see how can we apply them as we know that x1 is the function of w1 and w2 similarly x2 is also the function of w1 and w2 
and this is f is the function of both x1 which is the function of w1 and w2 and x2 which is also the function of w1 w2 so if you take the derivative of this with respect to w1 it will be equal to this is equal to note that were all this this derivative is f1 right this derivative is f1 so change f1 due to change in w1 is equal to change in f1 due to change in x1 and why change in x1 change in x1 because change in w1 so this is all about the change in x1 due to change in w1 at the same time change in f1 due to change in x2 right and change in x2 due to change in w1 because you know that x1 depends upon w1 and w2 at the same time x2 also depends upon w1 and w2 so that's why when you are taking the derivative of this function with respect to w1 with respect to w1 so w, w1 appears both in x1 as well as in x2 that's why you have to apply total derivative the derivative of x1 and the derivative of x2 right at the same time w1 will change your x1 then this x1 will change your the production function the first order derivative right this is the first order derivative at the same time w1 will change your x2 because x2 not only depends upon w2 but it also depends upon w1 and this w1 in turn changes the first order derivative that is the first order condition so this is how to take the derivative of the first equation with respect to w1 in the same way you can also take the derivative of uh, f1 with respect to w1 so you can report this as so this is this is f11 right and into change in x1 due to change in w1 plus this is uh, f12 this is f12 into change in x2 due to change in w1 in the same way you can take the derivative of the equation 2 right which is change in f due to change in x2 which is reported over here look at it so we took the derivative of this equation 1 in the same way you can take the derivative of equation 2 right so if we take the derivative of all these uh, equations we will get these equation look at it this is the same equation which we practice in the in the previous slide right and this is the derivative of f1 with respect to w1 we simply part this we are we are already done with it we did it right we are already done with this now take the derivative of w2 with respect to w1 in the same way you will get the same result something like this right similarly this was the derivative of equation 1 and equation 2 with respect to w1 now you have to do the same exercise with respect to w2 the derivative of equation 1 with respect to w2 and the derivative of equation 2 with respect to w2 and you will get the same these results right these results and these results can further be simplified something like this look at it these are the same results which we report in the previous slide right we reported the, all these results again so, so as to uh, report it in a matrix form so what we do is we report this and this over here in the first column and these two in the second column right so we form a matrix in the same way you can put its right hand side this entire component and this entire component over here and these components this component and this component over here so as to form a matrix because this is first column 
its value is reported over here. This is the second column, its value is reported over here. So that's why we form a matrix in the same way. Similarly, 1, 0 and 0, 1. So the right hand side is, uh, you can see this is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. So we transform these derivatives in a matrix form. The next slide becomes, this is the next slide. So we can decompose these uh, this, the, this matrix in two matrices. So we can take the second order derivative matrix, which is something like f1, 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 f2, f2, f1, f2, 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 f2 and the substitution matrix. This is the sub substitution matrix, or you can call it the matrix of the factor demand with respect to the matrix of the derivative of the factor demand with respect to input price. It contains on demand and cross demand as well and this is equal to the identity matrix. Ultimately uh, you can call it Hessian matrix because it contains all second order derivative and this is the uh, this is the this is the substitution matrix. If you multiply the inverse of this Hessian matrix to the uh, to both side you will get the substitution matrix in the left hand side in the inverse of the Hessian matrix on the right hand side and for the maximum profit it should be negative definite and it should be noted that the inverse of symmetric negative definite matrix is also a symmetric definite matrix. So that is why both these matrices are both these uh, matrices are negative. This is negative so this is also negative. This is from this property of linear algebra. So this matter substitution matrix is also negative, right? In this matrix, these are the uh, on partial derivatives, right? Which shows the change in factor demand uh, with respect to its own price. And this shows the change in factor uh, demand due to change in the price of the cross factor input. By symmetrical property, both these are equals. By symmetrical properties, we mean Young's theorem. Young's theorem means that uh, x w 1 w 2 must equal to x w 2 w 1. Cross partial derivatives are always equal, which is also known as symmetrical property. So, this is, this is, this is, this is where all this is equal to, this is negative, right? So it means that the this substitution matrix supports the uh, comparative statics when the price of W1 and W2 changes. Thank you, thanks for watching.